Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the lower zone. Now it's time to move on to Cubase's right zone. Here's our open project, and right here in the upper hand side of the window, we see the last of our three tab box options on the right here. If we click that, it opens up the right zone and presents us with the first of four tab choices. The first is VST Instruments tab, and this shows us all the active VST Instruments in our project. So from here, we can effectively activate or power up the instrument. We can turn on the editor for it. It's also the same button as it is over here in the track view, so lots of ways to get to the same thing. We can freeze the instrument to free up some CPU cycles if we're getting tight on resources. We can browse our preset browser for the instrument itself, which gives us access to the media bay for all of that. We can set up all the available inputs and outputs here. This instrument currently is only going out one set of stereo outs, but you can activate all 16 outputs if you choose. That way you have independent control over all 16 MIDI channel outputs. Very powerful stuff here. And as you add instruments, this will fill up with more and more of these. All right, second tab up here is the media tab. This opens up the media browser. This gives us access to the huge wealth of samples and resources and presets that are available in Cubase in a variety of different categories. So for example, these are all the instruments that are currently installed in our version of Cubase. And this is completely drag and drop. So for example, if we wanted a version of that, we simply drag it onto our timeline. Cubase will immediately set it up and open the instrument and basically have it ready to go from there. That's drag and drop simplicity. You can apply that same drag and drop approach to the incredibly vast library of loops and samples that are available that come with Cubase. So these are all the library choices that you have available. You simply click on them and it auto additions them for you down here in this audition window. There's a variety of different playback and audition options here. It can be synced to your project. For example, if you want to go through drum loops and then find out if a drum loop is going to work with your particular project, you can simply audition them in real time to your project. If you have the sync to project and wait for project play buttons clicked in play. instantly get an idea of whether it's going to work because it'll be synced in time with your project. Very handy, very powerful. And this is true of all of the different libraries. So you could easily spend months going through just these libraries alone and exploring all the stuff that's in here. There is just a mountain of stuff that's available to choose from and play with in here, even presets. You can also go through your own user presets and Cubase's presets. So for example, if you've created a big synth or you've created a specific kind of instrument that you want to recall, you can simply grab the preset and drag it onto your timeline as well. Cubase will automatically open that and load all of the relevant VST instruments that were associated with that. So for example, this preset came from Halion. We drag and drop it into our project. It opens up Halion complete with our preset ready to go. Allows us to drag and drop really complex configurations easily without having to go through and search them or, or remember which instrument we had open when we were trying to use that. Lots of creative options here as well. We could go on and on and we'll get more in depth about this. We can even browse our own file structure through the file browser here right inside of Cubase. So if we have our own presets and if we have instruments and things like that that are stored on other drives and we need to get to them, this is a quick and easy way to do so. Third tab up here is the control room tab. Now this is definitely a huge subject all on its own and we will absolutely get more and more into this. This allows us to get lots more advanced and much more sophisticated audio routing options than we have standard with Cubase. So we can set up things like headphone cues and we can add additional sources and reference sources. We can do dim soloing, we can do talk back. So that is our control room and it's enabled from this tab right here. And the fourth and final tab is the meter tab. This is the metering for all the project. It'll give us information both in RMS and in peak values down here, in addition to a variety of different scales, including all the current K scales, British scales, lots of professional options to choose from here on the bottom. We have a tab that allows us to measure loudness. Both LU and LUFS can be calibrated very precisely here. During playback, we simply enable that, and this will give us very accurate measuring of loudness over the duration of our project. So that is our right zone in a nutshell. We'll see you in the next video.